talk through the slides for Somerville Chapter 1. Somerville is uh, software engineering. Right, so the, the pieces that are in this chapter are professional software development, what does it mean, and software engineering ethics. Um, also in this chapter are several case studies that we'll look at in later chapters. I'm not going to talk about them, the case studies in this video. Um, I will talk about them in class in a bit more detail. So what's software engineering? Um, it's concerned with the theories, methods and tools for professional software development. And the reason we're interested in is most of the other things up on that list. All developed nations depend on software, expenditure on software is significant, and lots and lots of things are controlled by software. Um, often the software costs can dominate computer system costs, right? The computers may not be as expensive as uh, some of the software that runs on them. And software engineering is concerned with cost-effective software development. Another reason why we're interested in software engineering, and I'll, I should uh, give you a, a link to the chaos report, um, by the, I think it's the Standish group that does the chaos report, is that a lot of software projects fail. And there's various reasons for that. One of them is that uh, systems get very complicated, complex. And so we need to apply a methodical approach to ensure that we capture all of that complexity. Another reason is we maybe we don't use software engineering methods. Um, it's very easy to write code and people just want to get in and write code. And the problem I have with that is that it means there's not as much thought put into writing the code and how the code is supposed to work than maybe would be better. So what is professional software development? Well, what is software, right? I'm not going to read through this. You can read through the slides as well as I can. I'm just going to ask the questions. What are the attributes of good software? What is software engineering? What are the fundamental software engineering activities? What is the difference between software engineering and computer science? What is the difference between software engineering and system engineering? Right? And the, the key piece on this slide is what is software engineering? Software engineering is an engineering discipline that is concerned with all aspects of software production. It's not just that coding piece. Here's some more questions. What are the key challenges facing software engineering? What are the costs of software engineering? What are the best software engineering techniques and methods? And what differences has the web made to software engineering? And again, you can read these as well as I can, so I'm not going to read the answers. I will read the, the costs piece, right? Roughly 60% of software costs are development costs and 40% are testing costs. So for custom software, evolution costs often exceed development costs. So 40% are testing costs. I bet you, you didn't think about uh, that level of cost for, for testing. What is a software product, right? There's the generic products um, that are standalone systems that are marketed to anybody who wants them. And then there are customized products that are commissioned by a specific customer for a specific purpose. And uh, what you're going to be doing as a professional could fit into one or both of those, those categories. So um, one of the things that was on one of the, the slides about the 
uh, definition of software engineering was product specification. That is one of the key parts of software engineering and that is one of the things I'm asking you to learn about in uh, 3301 or 5301. And again, uh, we've got this split between generic products and customized products. A generic product, um, the, the spec that specification is owned by the software engineer, whereas in customized products, that specification is owned by the customer. And it's a very different uh, way to work. What makes good software? And, and here's, here's some characteristics that Somerville says should make good software. Maintainability, we can keep the software going. Dependability and security, that's talking about reliability, security, safety, right? Efficiency, you don't want uh, the software to take too much time or too much space um, or use up any other resource too much. And then acceptability. Um, it's, the software has to be acceptable for the users, right? If it's not acceptable, if the users don't understand it um, or don't think it's usable or it doesn't work for their particular need, then that's a problem. So software engineering is an engineering discipline that is concerned with all aspects of software production. We said that before. From the early stages of system specification through to maintaining the system after it has gone into use. Right? So the two key pieces out of this are it's an engineering discipline. There's And disciplines usually have processes and templates and checklists associated with them and then all aspects this isn't just about the technical process of development there's also project management and infrastructure maintenance and all of that side of thing as well delivery um, if you need to put together a shrink wrapped piece of software right that's that's not uh, writing code. Okay, so the importance of software engineering. I think you agree, it's important, right? I'm not gonna read the, the slides to it. You can read the slides yourself. Um, all of these slides are available in Blackboard. This is the chapter one of Somerville slides. So what are the, here's some activities, specification, development, validation, and evolution, right? Specification is the upfront stating of what the software is going to do. Development is working so that the software does what you told it was, said it was going to do. Validation is checking that the customer agrees that it does what you say it's doing and that the that's what the customer wanted and then evolution is moving it forward once you've delivered the software either you know version going from version 1 to 1.1 or version 1 to version 2 or deciding what else the software needs to do once it's been released Right, here's some, uh, a list of issues that affect software. Heterogeneity. Um, right, heterogeneity means that uh, we're not working in a, a completely homogenous environment. There are Windows PCs, there are Windows 7 PCs, there are Windows 10 PCs, there are Macs, there are Linux PCs, right? There are mobile devices running iOS or Android or uh, the, uh, the Windows system. Right? There are lots of um, different platforms and software has to generally run on a lot of them to be useful. 
Next issue is business and social change. Things change and sometimes things change very quickly. Mobile phones like the iPhone or the Android device have only happened relatively recently in terms of software engineering, but they've had a huge impact on both business and social aspects. So we and we have to, as software engineers, keep up with that that change. Security and trust is a, a, a huge issue. Everybody knows somebody whose uh, account has been hacked on any platform you could name, right? Um, and being able to reduce that uh, insecurity is one thing that we need to keep in, uh, in mind. And then scale, right? There's, um, it's okay to, to, to develop software for one particular computer. Maybe it's for um, the iPhone or the Android device, but then that software may run on a million Android devices or 10 million or a hundred million, right? And that, sense of scale is something that you've got to keep in mind when you're developing. If you didn't develop with that in mind, it's perfectly possible for you to release software that um, inadvertently launches a denial of service attack against your servers, right? So you've got to think about how that all hangs together. Um, this is this slide is saying um, it's related to the heterogeneity aspect, but the heterogeneity aspect is about the the, the hardware, the, the computing hardware. Um, this is also adding into that um, the way we work as software engineers is different for each workplace. I've worked in several different software engineering workplaces and every one of them has had a slightly different take on the right way to, to work as software engineers. So you've got to be aware of the different things you need to do as software engineers, but also that uh, aware of the different ways to do each of those pieces. Here's just a, a short list of application types, standalone applications that run on a PC perhaps, interactive transaction based applications, maybe that's for e-commerce, embedded control systems where we want uh, to control something, uh, the movement of something, maybe a robot, that sort of thing. Um, batch processing systems, this is often the way banks work. Entertainment systems, where the main thing we're interested in is playing media, whether that's video or audio or both. And then there, there's uh, software that uh, does modeling and simulation for us. There's software that does data collection. Maybe we've got sensors out in the field that uh, collect the, the wind and rain and temperature information that the, the weather bureau needs. And then there are systems of systems, right? Where the system we're dealing with is actually composed of a lot of other things. And a lot of applications tend to be like this. For example, a, a, a mobile phone application may have its own um, uh, software running on the mobile phone but then it needs to talk to a web API that's running on another server in the cloud. And that server in the cloud behind it has a database, perhaps it's Oracle, perhaps it's MySQL, perhaps it's a SQL Server. Um, and there are several software systems happening there so that the, the overall uh, app is actually a system of systems rather than a single application.
Okay, so software engineering fundamentals. Um, again, I'm not going to read this. Um, all it's saying is that there are some principles that apply across all types of software system, irrespective of the development techniques used. Right? Um, the system should be developed using a managed and understood development process. I don't know whether we talk about it later, but the, the Software Engineering Institute at uh, Carnegie Mellon has a way of thinking about uh, this, where the there's five levels of how well you do processes for software engineering. And the first level is called chaos, right? You haven't got anything written down, you don't necessarily do everything the same way twice. Right? So to be engineering, it's got to be a little bit above that. Um, dependability and performance is important and understanding how to manage the requirements are important. And we have to think about software reuse. Right? Um, that's got to be important because rewriting or writing new software can be a lot more expensive than just modifying existing software or reusing existing software. The web is, is fabulous for um, all sorts of things and uh, particularly um, the, the whole idea of the cloud is, is very much um, something of interest. Of course, there's, there's also downsides to that in terms of reliability sometimes, or security sometimes, um, but uh, having the internet is, is I believe, a, a general plus, but we have to be prepared to deal with some of the um, issues that it raises. Um, and as I was talking about earlier, web-based systems are complex distributed systems, but we've still got to work as a, a software engineer and uh, make them, all of those systems, adhere to good principles. And so what the second point here is saying is, and we haven't talked about Agile yet, we will in uh, for chapter three, I think, of, of Somerville. Um, this is suggesting that because uh, web services are available all the time or need to be available all the time, we're better off making small incremental changes to the platform and delivering those changes incrementally. And uh, the, the statement there is that it's now generally recognized that it's impractical to specify all the requirements of such systems in advance. It's certainly very difficult. And here's just another couple of items about web engineering, service-oriented systems. There's the, the whole concept of software as a service, right? And then the nice thing about the web is that now we're getting some really nice technologies for uh, building rich interfaces in the, the browser. So one, most of what we've talked about so far has been technical. Um, the other thing we really need to talk about is um, the, the more human and the ethical side of software engineering. So as it says, and I, as I think I've, I've tried to get across, software engineering is more than just writing code. There's also the, the, the wider responsibilities of ensuring that you do the right thing by your customer, by the company you work for, and by the general public. And I think I mentioned the, uh, some of the issues that I've had personally with um, unethical behavior of software engineers. In particular, the uh, 
Volkswagen uh, diesel engine fiasco that happened where the software engineers detected when tests were being run on the emissions of, a, of the Volkswagen diesel engines and changed the way the engine ran while it was being tested. And that led to a whole series of things that uh, the Volkswagen company had to, had to do. Um, as a professional, um, you have to uh, apply various things. In particular, you have to be apply confidentiality. You can't let everybody know um, what's happening with the code in the company that you're working for. Um, you need to tell people you're working with and for when you feel uncomfortable with the level of competence that you have with something you've been asked to do. Right? You need to say, hey, I don't know how to do this. And oftentimes employers will ensure that you get trained appropriately in whatever that is, if you don't know, and they require that you do. Um, specifically related to um, software is our intellectual property rights, right? In terms of copyright, in terms of patents, in terms of uh, keeping things commercially uh, confidential. And you need to be aware of what your employer requires of you in that regard. You also need to make sure that you don't misuse a computer. You don't set it up for um, security violations. You don't set it up for uh, a denial of service type operations. You make sure that you don't disseminate viruses, as the slide says. The ACM, the IEEE, has a code of ethics and most professional bodies have a code of ethics and I suggest that you uh, understand what the, the code of ethics that uh, the ACM, the IEEE has. Right, here's the rationale and again I'm not going to read it to you. Um, I'm not going to read through the, the code of ethics either, but you should have a, have a read through it, right? And I'm just going to quickly say the, the eight principles, right? The public interest, acting in the best interests of your client and employer, make sure that your products meet the highest professional standards, that you apply your judgment with integrity and independence, that you promote a, an ethical approach to management, that the, um, you uphold the reputation of the profession, that you're fair and supportive to your colleagues, and that you participate in lifelong learning as a, as a professional. And as I said, I'm not going to talk about the, the case studies in any way uh, for this uh, video. So let's just uh, scan to the end, I think. Is that the... No, there's, there's, there's no more. So that's the end of uh, chapter one of Somerville. Like I said, I will talk about the, um, the case studies in more detail in lectures. Thank you.